Today I will show you how value ops can help you organize around value streams, flow work through them, and have complete visibility from strategy to value delivered. Let's start with our value stream called business bank engagement. This value stream consists of underlying product investments, digital banking, and monetary transfers, each with their own supporting epics. This is where the business has placed its bets to drive value. Deborah Berry has P&L responsibility for this value stream. One of the first activities she's engaged in is to fund her business, much like any other ongoing business. In this case, we can see that she has funding of $9.6 million. The change from funding every single unit of work, such as a project or epic, to funding the higher value stream and then trusting the value stream leadership team to adapt to the market they serve is having a profound impact on companies. Let me give you an example. A large financial services customer simplified their annual planning from funding 900 of these IT projects with a billion dollar spend to funding just 10 value streams a major reduction in the planning and approval process. As a result, they improved their engagement with the business by being more responsive and delivering results faster. Now let's take a look at the funding detail. This is where Deborah can track her budget. Value stream budgets go beyond headcount or teams to include non-labor expenses, such as hardware or software and are planned over fiscal periods. Here we can see that she has a hardware budget of roughly 2.3 million. Of course, these plans can be revised as needed to support business goals. Next, let's look at how we are performing against our budget. Deborah uses this next financial view to understand budget performance and financial benefits. The total budget is $9.6 million, with expected benefit of $27.2 million, resulting from the growth of our business. Deborah can also manage her budget against category of spend, such as hardware or software, to understand where they might be over or under spending. And at the bottom, we have lean guardrails to guide our $9 million spend. For example, how much do we want to invest in technical debt? versus new features? Or how much do we want to invest in each of our strategies, such as improved user adoption or hardened security? And at the top, we can track how our benefits compare to our cost. Next, let's take a look at our Lean Guardrails dashboard. Deborah may not know every detail that engineering is working on, but she wants to make sure they are investing in the right areas. At the top of this view, we see epics in each of the planning horizons. We have a healthy mix of new innovation, along with retiring old capabilities, while we're building the core of the digital app. These guardrails ensure that we are investing for today as well as the future. The middle shows our capacity. The capacity guardrails indicate the percent of resources that should be allocated to new features versus enablers or maintenance or technical debt. We can see here that we're over rotating on enablers, which may be a red flag or simply might indicate that new platform work is needed to launch a new innovation initiative. And at the bottom, we can see our target allocation to the various strategies compared to what we're really working on. We have a smaller investment in user adoption than was intended. We are showing guardrails that have been defined by the SAFE methodology. Please keep in mind that your business might have different guardrails to guide your organization's spend. Now let's take a look at how our investment aligns to strategy. At the beginning of the planning period, the executive team defines the strategies that will drive the business and enable us to accomplish our goals as an organization. We have defined the business bank engagement value stream with associated strategic themes, key results, and supporting epics. 
Given the recent news of increasing security attacks and the security challenges of people working from home, the CEO has asked us to make security a top priority. One of the strategic themes we see here is hardened security, with key results to track our progress. And when the CEO asks, what are we doing to harden security? We can easily show the epics supporting this strategy. For example, the NextGen Fraud Alert System. Next, let's take a look at how we prioritize our demand represented by epics. The value stream is tightly connected to the business and the business collaborates with Deborah's team to prioritize demand in order to get the best value possible. They use the roadmap as their central communication and planning tool. This view by fiscal period shows how the roadmap aligns to our strategy. The swim lanes on the left allow us to organize our roadmap in ways that are relevant to our stakeholders. For example, I can just as easily change my view to the horizon timeline to communicate what uh, we are retiring versus the areas where we are investing. For now, let's return to our strategy discussion to show the work being done to harden security, such as the next gen fraud alert system. The pandemic has triggered a need for more rigorous security to protect our systems and our work from home stakeholders. And Deborah's getting questions about this from her internal customers and they wanna know more. For example, what problems are we solving? How big of an effort are we looking at? And she can drill in to answer these questions. For example, she can talk about the lean business case or the minimal viable product and answer questions such as, who will use this capability? What pain does this solution solve? What strategy are we aligned to? Because everything is connected to give us the information we need when we need it. And engineering can now see beyond the current season of work to see where we're headed and visualize what the end game is all about. Because when they have the bigger picture, they begin to think about the technical problems they need to solve in the future and come up with solutions along the way. As we prioritize the epics, we'll want to take into account our overall capacity or other constraints. I can use this roadmap grid to help me plan. And in this case, we know that we need the next gen fraud alert, so let's make sure that it is included and prioritized. Now that we've established our business priorities, the business demand will move to engineering so they can begin to work to refine prioritization, analyze it, and deliver on the plan. Here Patrick can see that the EPIC Next Gen Fraud Alert System has been decomposed into features and stories for capacity planning and analysis. Patrick can also see the progress of these work items. The feature, Priority Fraud Alerts, is 40% done with quite a way to go. The progress data is rolled up from multiple trains or programs for enterprise visibility. Imagine how difficult it is to roll up data from disparate team instances. We streamline this for our customers and give them the information they need all in one place. Patrick and the feature teams use their Kanban to see the flow of work through the development lifecycle, complete with exit agreements, using work in progress limits at each phase of the lifecycle. The cards show the metrics the Agile PMO and others use to track work, including WISGIF score to sequence the jobs we want to work on. Of course, teams can choose their own lifecycle and add any metrics to personalize their view. The team is currently analyzing priority fraud alerts and knows this is an important feature for the business. Next, we need to figure out how to get this work done. We can use capacity planning with what-if scenarios to make sure that we build an achievable plan. On the left, we have the work to be done. On the right, we have the teams doing the work. Here we can see that the security team is at 24%. Let's take a look at what they are working on. I can easily drag and drop new features such as a priority fraud alert to see the impact and determine what the team can handle. 
By dragging on priority fraud alerts, I now see that the security team is at 31%. This gives everyone visibility into what we will be working on in the next PI or release, and we can have trade-off discussions that make sense. We've aligned what the business wants, the epics, to the work, the features, and to the teams doing the work. It all comes down to visibility and traceability up and down the chain. Then the teams can use team planning to plan for upcoming iterations. Team planning is another great capability because like capacity planning, it allows teams to pull work and schedule it into iterations for both stories and defects. The difference between them is that we have moved from what if scenarios to the actual work being committed to. We see that we have a warning on iteration five due to a velocity of 102%. We'll probably wanna work on this because otherwise we won't have any wiggle room. If I look at iteration six, I can see there's another warning. I can drill down and see things like we're missing estimates for some of our tasks. The team can ensure the top stories for the highest value features are done first and create an optimal plan that everyone can agree to. This helps tee up the confidence vote for their plan. Now that we've gotten information from the business, organized it, planned it, and put it into a release or a PI, we're able to use release tracking to understand progress. Here we can track the status of stories and features across releases and identify issues at a glance. Here Patrick can see that the priority fraud alerts is red and drills in to see what's going on. He can understand things like the test server is down and therefore stalling our ability to test the user story. He'll want to get that resolved. He can also look across the iterations and see defects and dependencies to learn more. He can view dependencies at both the story and feature level and understand any impact to our delivery. He can also access real-time analytics such as flow metrics to make sure we are on track to deliver the plan or make data-driven trade-off decisions if the plan changes. Now let's take a look at another view to track our progress. Our program dashboard shows powerful analytics at every level of the organization and helps Patrick make decisions based on real-time data versus manual spreadsheets. Patrick can once again see that the priority fraud alerts is at risk and could delay delivery if not resolved soon. The PI throughput on the right shows me how much work is being done across releases. On the bottom, Milestone burnup shows how many points have been accepted versus the plan, and the milestone cumulative flow helps improve predictability and shows how many stories have been accepted, completed, or still in progress compared to the total number defined. And we also have a view into our defects. The power of using real-time data allows us to actually know whether the work is really on track. Within one to two iterations, we should know if the planned work can be completed. If not, it allows us to make trade-off decisions without ever having to ask someone if they are done or done done. These metrics and others help drive engineering excellence. As engineering works on this release or PI, the business owner often has many questions. Let's take a look at another view Deborah can use to communicate with her stakeholders. Our portfolio EPIC status report helps us communicate the value we are delivering back to the business. Here I can see where we are in the life cycle. I can see we have quite a bit of work coming into the funnel. I can also understand what we are delivering in terms of enablers or features, as well as understand how our work is aligned to the strategies. We know that the next gen fraud alert is top of mind, so let's drill in to learn more. This dashboard provides a clear line of sight into the delivery progress. We can see we're at 44%, the financial impact, along with the planned delivery date. We also can see the business value along with key results 
and most importantly, the problem we are solving for our customer. We just showed you in a short amount of time how value ops can be used by your organization for value stream management. You've seen the flow of value to the organization, how to manage and monitor the software delivery lifecycle, the traceability of data and visualization of information throughout the overall lifecycle, all in the context of Scaled Agile. We look forward to working with you in the future and thank you for your time. <music>